And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Anjali Comment. Welcome, everyone. Nine members of a Michigan-based Christian militia group have been charged in connection with an alleged plot to spark a war against the federal government. On Monday, the Justice Department said the group, known as the Hooteri, planned on killing a law enforcement officer and then bombing the funeral procession. According to the indictment, Hooteri members hoped the funeral attack would weaken law enforcement morale ahead of a full-scale uprising against the government. Eight members of the group were arrested over the weekend in raids in Michigan, Ohio and Indiana. The ninth suspect was arrested Monday. A witness to an FBI raid in Indiana said he saw law enforcement officers seize a cache of weapons. Oh, they were full tactical gear. They had the shields, helmets, uh, bulletproof vests, assault rifles, everything, the whole nine yards, just like you see on TV. Prosecutors say Hooteri members have trained in weaponry and bomb-making since at least 2008. Video posted on YouTube shows armed Hooteri members conducting military-like training exercises. The individuals in the videos are dressed in full combat gear and carry weapons. In one video, they burn the flag of the United Nations before hoisting their own flag in its place. Part of the group's website reads, quote, Jesus wanted us to be ready to defend ourselves using the sword. Well, earlier this month, the Southern Poverty Law Center released a report called Rage on the Right, the Year in Hate and Extremism. It tracks a major rise in domestic right-wing extremist groups in the United States. According to the report, the number of right-wing militias tripled last year to 127. Two chapters of the Hooteri militia, one in Michigan, the other in Utah, were included on the list. Mark Potok is director of the Intelligence Project at the Southern Poverty Law Center in Montgomery, Alabama, and that's where he joins us. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Mark. What do you know about this group? Well, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, what we, frankly, we knew very little. We spotted them uh, early in 2009. Uh, they seem to be a very small group, two very small chapters. Uh, and what was remarkable about the group was their very particular kind of Christian millennial spin on what are really very common theories in the militia movement. I mean, basically, uh, virtually all militias, the secular militias, have an idea uh, about what is going on out there and the nefarious role that the federal government is playing. Uh, what they basically believe uh, is that the government is planning to impose martial law, hurt Americans who resist into concentration camps, uh, and ultimately the government will be subsumed in some kind of uh, new world order, a sort of socialist hell is the way it is imagined. You know, this particular group uh, had this very strange spin on the whole theory in which uh, the enemy was not so much uh, a secular new world order as the Antichrist. And they identify the Antichrist very closely with the UN uh, and in particular in ha with uh, Javier Solana. So uh, they're very similar to the other militias we've seen uh, come roaring back in the last year or so, although they have this very particular twist. And Mark Potok, has your group been following the Hooteri for a while? Tell us when you first found out about them. Well, we first spotted them in early 2009. And really, uh, they didn't look uh, a whole lot different from many other militias we track. They were uh, very paramilitary in their orientation. As you said in your introduction, they had a great many videos uh, showing uh, pretty remarkable combat operations or combat training. Uh, you know, this wasn't merely people shooting at targets. It was people uh, carrying out field exercises, using smoke bombs and so on. So, you know, it looked uh, rather similar to real military training. Uh, but, uh, you know, that is true of a great many of the militias, so, you know, there wasn't any particular indication that these people, uh, in particular, were ready to go operational. And why are they based, uh, and the uh, information you have on the raids in Ohio, Indiana, Michigan? I'm sorry, why are they based in those states? Is there a particular is reason in those states and what the FBI, how the FBI found out information about them? No, I mean, I don't think there's any particular meaning that they're in those states. Uh, I will say that uh, Michigan has been quite a hotbed for the militias. Of course, I'm sure many people remember uh, that Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols, the Oklahoma City bombers, had contacts with uh, uh, militias in Michigan. Uh, so that is, uh, you know, a state where this movement has been roiling and boiling uh, all the way since the 1990s, and it's a state where we're seeing a great deal of activity again now. 
Uh, I think that the, uh, the federal agents somehow got wind of something going with these guys, and it's pretty clear from reading the indictment and some of the supporting affidavits uh, that they had someone in that group, some kind of confidential informant, uh, going back to 2008. And Mark Potok, let's take this back a little bit before this, um, the, the, the DOJ made this um, announcement this week regarding the Houthi militia. There have been a number of incidents over the previous weeks, and lawmakers are continuing to receive threats in the wake of the health care vote. Um, New York Democratic Congressman Anthony Weiner was forced to close an office in Queens Thursday after his staff received a threatening letter with a suspicious white powder. The letter directly referred to Weiner's support for health care reform. At least 10 House Democrats have reported death threats or incidents of harassment since last week. As Congress was preparing to vote for the health care reconciliation package last week, Republican Congressman Steve King of Iowa addressed a group of Tea Partiers and urged opponents of health care reform to beat the other side to a pulp. So I've got to go back up and vote again against the reconciliation package, but I wanted to come down here in this little window about 12 minutes so I could say to you, God bless you. Oh, God bless you. That was uh, Steve King addressing Tea Party gathering. Mark Potok, your response. Well, uh, one thing I can say is that Steve King has played a really uh, nasty role uh, for a number of years now. I mean, this is only the latest from him. Steve King has spent a great deal of energy uh, defaming undocumented immigrants. He has made a claim for many years now uh, that undocumented immigrants in this country murder 12 Americans every day uh, and uh, drunken illegal aliens, as he would say. Uh, run over and kill another 13 Americans every day. You know, we actually looked into this claim, and it's utterly false. It's not even remotely close to the truth. Uh, you know, so he is one of the people who I would argue are out there, people in the ostensible mainstream, who have absolutely been heating up the situation, who have been uh, pouring all kinds of vitriol on uh, conspiracy theories and so on uh, into the public square. So I, I think what we're seeing uh, is a reflection of that. I really do feel that public figures and certain commentators have helped to heat up the whole situation. Uh, you know, and, and in some ways, uh, the culmination of that was exactly what we were talking about just earlier uh, with what's happened to many congressmen. Uh, it's probably worth noting also that the many bricks thrown through congressmen's uh, windows around the country in the last week or so uh, were apparently inspired by a call from a particular Alabama militia figure, a guy named Mike Vanderbo, uh, who wrote two Fridays ago uh, on his blog uh, a long screed, break their windows, break them now, break them again, uh, and on like that. So we're seeing, uh, you know, all kinds of factors come together. Uh, that are helping to drive this real uh, rapid expansion of the right, this real rage on the right. And then Congressmember Louise Slaughter of New York was one of at least four cases of vandalism targeting Democratic offices across the country late last week. She stopped by her office in Niagara Falls to see the damage caused by the vandalism last week. When I go out on the floor of the House and I'm going to do something, I think about you. I think about the calls that we've had, the awful things that have happened to you in health care, worried about your jobs. We're all in this together. Yeah. We all belong yes, together we are. in what we're trying yes, to do. And it is such a wonderful thing to be American. And we have got to, if we're going back 40 years, and I hope to heaven we are not, in the way we treat each other, we have got to stamp that out right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. I could not yeah. believe it. Last Sunday, probably one of the most beautiful days the Lord has made, was really destroyed for all of us by the actions that took place on the Capitol grounds. In the first place, it's the only time I've ever known them, John, they came right up to the Capitol. They, usually there was sort of a distance there. And 
some of my colleagues went out on the balcony, looking a great deal like Mussolini, if you remember, those of us who are of a certain age, mm -hmm. egging them on with megaphones, holding up signs saying kill. Uh, some of my African-American colleagues, the great icon of civil rights, John Lewis, oh, yeah. was harassed yeah. by people with very petty and small minds. That didn't pay. What I saw coming out that day was not any concern particularly about health care. I know what it was. I've seen it before. But we have to make absolutely certain that America is stronger than that. It is better than that. Absolutely. And we know that it is. That's New York Congressmember Louise Slaughter. Uh, when we come back from break, we'll continue with Mark Potok of the Southern Poverty Law Center. He's joining us from Montgomery, Alabama, to talk about his report, Rage on the Right. Stay with us.